Hey guys, Casey Foster here from Netcode Guides, doing a demo review here for Doomblood on his DE Dust match. Uh, this is currently a uh, matchmaking game, actually. Um, not sure if he's queued up with these guys or not. I don't think he is, based on some of the plays I've seen in this game. Um, but here we are. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, he tends to have a more of an aggressive play style on both T and CT side of this match. Um, and we will let some of these rounds play out so we can talk about a few things. So obviously you just hit that guy, you hit a guy on mid as well. And I don't know if you don't know, but you generally want to slow down to a complete stop when shooting the op, um, either by counter strafing, by holding an angle while you're standing still, or uh, if you slow down by letting go of the key to come to a complete stop to shoot. Um, so you whiffed an AFK shot right there. The dude is not looking at you. He's looking at long. You actually get another shot off on him because it didn't react to what you saw. But the first shot you missed because you weren't standing still. You were completely moving. Um, it's generally not even a good idea to attempt to take that shot uh, with an op, especially um, while moving. You can get away with it a little bit with some other guns, but generally speaking, it's not a good idea with the op. Um, so you guys are now in a three on four situation. You guys got pick at a site and that dude had jumped up ramp. And now you know that there's two more people here and you have no clue where the third player is at. Obviously on radar, we can see that he's at B and a general setup would be two at B, one mid, uh, two B or two mid, two A and one B. Um, those are two general setups. So now you've spotted two more people. You have a teammate at long, you have a teammate at cat. Um, there's no real reason to take this fight with this dude here. Um, he headshots you pretty quickly. You guys are in a three on three situation. You're still not, you know, guaranteed to lose the round, but there was no need to really take that fight. Um, this is something you'll do a lot throughout the demo. You take fights in situations that you really shouldn't. Um, you'll, you would have, if you would have stayed alive and just went to site, you would have put your team at a massive advantage. Um, just playing with your teammates and cross-firing these guys as they came up CT spawn. Um, and they end up just coming up behind this guy and killing him from ramp pretty easily. So uh, the one thing that you want to take from that round right there is, or the two things you want to take from that round is taking your time when shooting the op. You need to be completely still. Um, and then taking fights that you don't need. Then that guy in CT spawn has a disadvantage coming up that ramp to a site to fight you. So you would have been in an advantage, um, an advantage spot if he would have tried to take that fight, if you would have went to ramp or if you would have went to site, you would have been in the advantage. So um, putting yourself in disadvantaged spots is not a good idea. You're generally going to come out on the lower end of that. So let's go to the next round. All right. You guys won a few rounds. Um, you, sh you, sh you strung a few rounds together there. Um, we're here on another gun round. They've got a full buy. Your teammate gets a nice pick mid and... This is um, something I mentioned earlier. You're a very aggressive T side player. Um, a little bit too aggressive at times. Actually, most of the time you're too too aggressive um, and you're going to get penalized um, for this pretty early in this round right here. So you're 100, one minute, 42 seconds in the round. Um, you're ahead of your teammate right now on cat. Um, they're actually on the mid ramp. I guess he went away from you and you're just running up cat um, with an up. And you didn't clear anything. You didn't use any of your smokes or flashes to get yourself onto cat. Um, I don't really advise going up cat by yourself with an op, um, let alone just rushing it. So um, there's a few other options you could have had there. Um, using your flash to flash yourself onto cat, using that grenade, nading into the corner to either force him off of cat or to do a little damage and then go up cat. Uh, but just blindly running up cat with an op, um, trying to react to where they're at is not a good idea. Um, I actually will probably touch on that in a, another part of this video, but um, one of your tendencies is to get into um, situations where you have to react to where they're at versus being prepared for where the bad guys are at. Um, some things that you'll probably hear a lot of player pro, pro players talk about or just um, you know top streamers and stuff talk about is crosshair placement and being aware. Um, you generally want to have your crosshair where the bad guy's going to be. And in that situation, you're kind of crosshair. You didn't really have a crosshair with the op, but you were just looking into no man's land kind of. It's not going to come out too well for you. Um, trying to react to where the bad guys are at. So something to take out of that round. 
don't just blindly run up cat with a minute 42 seconds left in the round you know take your time work things work picks um go up cat with a teammate you know an ak so he can you know run around the corner and try and frag the dude and then if he doesn't get the kill you'll at least get the trade frag so um that's something you're gonna want to look forward in the future as well all right and um in this round you actually um you actually get the kills when you really shouldn't have um but it comes from you shooting very fast i've noticed this throughout the entire demo pretty much with every gun you tend to just click as fast as you can and i don't know if it's because you get excited or nervous but you just tend to shoot really fast in a lot of situations um that don't really um you don't really need to so that dude was shooting a window you know you could have just taken your time got the kill um you obviously do get the kills but you're shooting very 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 fast in other parts of this demo you're shooting really fast you tend to get actually you do get one or two of the kills but um you really shouldn't have it's just you you they made it they were so low that you did get the kill but one of the things i want to talk about is you're you're shooting very fast with the op as well you're kind of running and then just shooting before being stopped the same thing applies to rifles pistols you can move and shoot a little bit quicker with um but you generally speaking you don't just spam the guns you don't unless you're like right next to them you don't just spam the guns but you were um you don't want to just go bang 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 you know you want to just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot um you know taking your time making sure that the recoil resets um in this in a few of the other spots in this demo i'm not going to go in i'm not going to go find them because they weren't real critical situations but i picked out that last round because you had done it a few times before so i figured it was something i would talk about um just giving your yourself or the gun sorry time for the recoil to reset meaning come back down and the bullet will be accurate again if you do that you will be much more successful with pretty much all guns um especially the op and uh and the uh, pistols um so give that a try and uh we'll go on to the next round here we are on a ct sided round now we're on the second half. This is the defensive side of the map where you're going to be playing defense. Um, you you tend to play a little bit more aggressive on CT side than you should, um, and it gets you killed a few times. But what's happened here is your smoke and his smoke, actually, but it was more actually your smoke. You didn't throw it into the doors. You just threw it in the general direction of the doors. And it's actually going to get you killed here because what your smoke did is it actually created a wall for the fake Freiburg right there to get out of doors and get into this spot. Um, so you 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 pushed. That was the first mistake. The second mistake, actually, the first mistake was missing the smoke. If they're not doing a long rush, you can take your time and throw that smoke. You can even get into pit, wait a few seconds, then throw that smoke. Um, you so the first mistake was missing that smoke second mistake is pushing on ct side into the doors not really needed to push that smoke um, you guys aren't dominating these guys by any means so pushing that was generally speaking not the right play um, sometimes you do push long sometimes you don't that's why i said generally speaking um, and the third thing was just not being cautious you have to think hey there's a smoke here i could not see behind this smoke he can be over here if you watch any pro player any top player they clear everything. If there's a possibility of a player being somewhere and you don't have the information knowing that he can be there or not, you have to just check that spot. You have to clear it. You can, you're not going to assume that somebody's going to be there, but you do have to check it. Uh, so there was three small mistakes in that round that got you killed um, and, and technically probably could have cost you this match because you guys got it pretty close. I think you lost 16-13 or something. Um, and you potentially could have won the round, you know, just with a few of these rounds where you push or where you die, um, you know, going the other way. So um, take that into account and uh, we'll go to the next round. All right. And here we are. Another CT sided round. You had two flashes, a smoke and a grenade. There's a minute and 31 seconds left in the round and you burned it all at long. Um, you missed the smoke and you missed the flash and you actually threw your grenade into the doors as well or around the doors. All of them didn't go into the doors, so they were pretty much a waste of all of those um, pieces of equipment. And then you burned your flash on cat actually before the cat players were there. So uh, we actually didn't 
catch it in this round, but that's one thing you'll want to take into account is utilizing your equipment to your advantage and utilizing it when you see them. Just burning it in situations where you don't have information if they're near or not is not going to be too beneficial to you. So the next thing is you're in a site, um, you have a P90. This is a short range gun. Generally speaking, um, you're going to want to have this gun in a close quarter of combat. Um, it doesn't work too well at long range. You can't burst fire. It's not going to just two-shot them, especially versus AKs very well. And what you can do instead of taking these long-range gun fights with this gun is don't take them and get yourself into situations where you can be close to them. So we're going to play this round out here. You're going to find out very quickly that this dude has an AK and it's a stronger gun at the distance that you guys take this gunfight right here. Um... You, you hit him a few times and he came out on the kill, came out with the kill because his gun is stronger. So a better a better solution to, or a better option to what you did is instead of taking that gunfight on that cat guy is just not take that cat, cat gunfight, either stay on a ramp and let them come to you or have been on cat early in the round. You had enough equipment to play cat by yourself with a P90 and you would have had a much better result in that situation. So. The long range gunfights versus short range gunfights is something I see a lot of lower tier players doing. They will take a pistol or an SMG and try and fight an AK or an M4 at long range and you're just not going to win those. So take that into consideration. Use what equipment or what gun you have to your advantage. Put yourself in the best possible scenario to get the kill. Um, if you have an SMG, get into a situation where you're up close. If you have a shotgun, get into a situation where you're up close. If you have a scout or an op, play your distance. Um, with that said, you know, take that into consideration for the rest of your game, and uh, we'll, let's go to the next round. All right, and here you guys are on a bit of an eco. Um, obviously, you are on the eco round. You have a pistol versus big guns, but that is no excuse for actually what happens here. So they threw a flash out along. You got into pit, a very, very, very dominant spot, and you basically stay hiding here for too long, and you don't know that this guy is out of long. Um, I'm not sure if that was your teammate smoke or the bad guy smoke, but I'm gonna go out on a whim and, and assume that that's the bad guy smoke and that it he threw that for himself on purpose to try and get out of long. Um, and you have to know the timing so that you have to know that if you have the best spawn and CT spawn and they have the best spawn and T spawn, you guys will meet each other at the corner basically. So you had a bad spawn and he must have had a good spawn because he beat you out of long and you didn't pay attention to if he could be out or not. He's just staring at you, gets a free frag. So what I want to talk about here has, is, is really, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that everybody should be thinking about in Counter-Strike is the information that you have in the game. You need to know if there can be a bad guy somewhere or if there cannot be a bad guy somewhere. And in that situation, there could have been a bad guy there. And you didn't know that because you weren't getting information. You weren't peeking, you weren't looking up over the ledge, you weren't expecting them to be out. Getting that information super key to CS and what I mean by um, just information in general I'm gonna let this play out now because that was actually the last round I want to talk about and I'm gonna recap everything in a second but getting information is is key to CS you'll hear a lot of pro players and top players talk about this and casters in general um, or just CS players in general sorry we'll talk about getting the information in, in Counter-Strike where somebody will go to a spot find out how many players are in the site so if there's two players in B side, if there's one player in B side, or if there's no players in B side, oh, bad shot. Um, you always want to be trying to find out how many people can be somewhere. And you have to do that by peeking, by throwing flashes and peeking it, by throwing grenades and, or throwing mollies and forcing them out of their spots. Um, getting the information is very, imp is very important. So at long right there, you just ran and you ran straight into pit and you didn't have the information if he was out or not and you got killed. So that applies to everything in CS, not just that one certain scenario. Um, there's, that's why people have strategies and methods like to clearing spots on parts of the map. Um, the strategies are to find out where the bad guys are at and then go hit the other site. Or if you find out where they're at, throw a flash to kill them. Um, that's all informational based things. And there's a lot of things that you can do by yourself to find out information and get kills by yourself as well. Uh, there's a lot of solo queue videos that I've made um, made videos of and it's people showing or it's me showing people how to get information on certain parts of the map and get kills um, I just released one on Mirage where I show you how to get out of a ramp with a smoke and find the information out and find out where the bad guys are at and get kills 
um, and basically react based on the information. So just to recap this demo review a little bit, um, you need to play a little bit more passive on CT side. It's uh, it's you're playing defense on CT side. T side, you're the aggression. You're you're you need to play a little bit more aggressive on T side. Um, not saying you personally. I'm saying T side is the more aggressive side. With that said, you need to play a little bit more passive on T side. You were running up cat with ops. You were running into situations where there was multiple bad guys there. Um, you, you're not going to have a very good time in Counter Strike doing that because you're putting yourself in disadvantages. Um, next thing is clearing spots uh you need to take your time clearing spots um using flashes to pe uh, flash peek things using grenades to force them out of position using mollies to force them out of positions using smokes to smoke off certain parts of the map so that you can fight somebody somewhere else um those are all important things you can learn all of these in netcode premium videos um and the last thing is you need to slow down when shooting especially the op and your pistols you tend to shoot before you've let the recoil reset um, if you do all of these things I've mentioned in this video, you will have a much better success rate in Counter-Strike and enjoy the game a lot more because it's much more fun to win. So, hope you enjoyed this demo review. I hope you learned a lot and I hope all the rest of the people that watch this uh, learned a lot as well. So, anyway, thanks guys. This is Casey Foster from NetcodeGuys.com. Peace!